Hey everyone, it's Rob with Passport to the Parks, and tonight is Friday, June the 28th, and I'm back here at Disney's Caribbean Beach, where I was yesterday, and found this massive fenced-in area behind me that I'm really curious about what's going on here. So I came back here tonight to kind of open this up as a general discussion of thoughts and ideas. A lot of people had some really great comments and stuff going on YouTube and Facebook, so I figured I'd let a lot of people get on here. We can look at it, we can walk around it, and we can try to figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, I talked to management here, and they were not given any information uh, as far as what it is or what's going on. The, uh, the Disney Skyliner team pretty much is hush-hush about everything that they do, which is understandable, um, which kind of makes it fun as well. Um, you know, I'd rather kind of have some fun and kind of figure out what this might be and, um, you know, think about future possibilities. And maybe we're just overthinking everything. Maybe it just is new walkways, but who knows? We're going to look at it. But uh, I got a lot of people coming on, so let me turn you around and uh, we'll start here. Benjamin Haley, right off the bat, thank you very much for the, uh, the 999 Super Chat. Very, very generous. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll uh, have a great discussion here tonight. But thank you, Benjamin. That is very, very awesome of you. Uh, Kyle, welcome. Liam, welcome. Steve, welcome. RP Buckets. Uh, Jeffrey, welcome. Charles, Mr. Cruise Fever. Uh, Charles Moncton, hello. Um, let me see who else we got coming on here. David, welcome. Albin, always good to have you here. Bill, Janelle. Uh, snow, snowy bum, snowy bun, I believe. Good evening. Uh, let's see. Love the live feeds and get uh, get a bite on you, Benjamin. I will. Thank you very, very much. Gates, Justin, you are just great. Thanks for the updates. Jeffrey got my passport to the parks T-shirt. Awesome. That is very, very cool. Uh, they are a lot of fun. I trust me. When you wear them, especially down here, everybody's always asking what it is, and um, it's just really, really cool. So I appreciate you getting that. Loves Disney. Welcome. Resort budgeting, good afternoon. Uh, stay cool. Yeah, I definitely came here later this evening because I just really got tired of my, uh, my camera frying in the sun and shutting down on me. It's just been so unbelievably hot here. Snowy Bun, thank you for uh, doing all the Skyliner updates. Very appreciated. Bill, you arrive in Walt Disney World tomorrow. Robert Oakley Mills, hello. Danielle, welcome. Larry, hey, what's up? Dave, it's a rock quarry. Yes, it is. Uh, Mike, hey, uh, thanks for the heads up. No problem. So, when I filmed this yesterday, just the fence was up. So, this fence wraps all the way around this area in Trinidad, and right behind me is Trinidad. And I'm just going to show a little bit, a little bit of this real quick, and then we'll we'll start talking comments and everything. And then there's the Skyliner station that's actually across the across the lake, Barefoot Bay. And then this whole fenced-in area takes up a huge portion of land here. So almost, uh, almost down to the parking lot area. And then it goes out to the street as well. Now they've had this marked off for, for quite a while. Like I said, uh, some of the um, Imagineers, the Skyliner Imagineers were out here probably two months ago and they were walking all around and they were talking and doing their thing. And then these, uh, these little flag markers were all over the place. And that's to mark, I believe, electrical and water, whatever would be under there. Then they also had these stakes in the ground as well with the, uh, the pink flags on them. But like I said, they, they had put the fence up and they had put a sign out by the, the water and it's this exact sign. This sign has just come up today as well, right in front of this fenced area. It's the very same sign, pardon our pixie dust, as we enhance this area for Disney's innovative transportation system, which is the Skyliner. But again, there's no concept art or anything that shows anything that's going on over here. So let me try to catch up here real quick. Let's see what, uh, see what we're saying. Tab and Kurt, pile of concrete put there, put there just to mess with people's minds. Yeah, it's messing with my mind. Patrick, uh, my guess is bathrooms, like at the Art of Animation. Uh, let's see, is it mist? Uh, missed BMPN, I'm not sure. I'll be there in 16 days, uh, staying in Barbados. All right, Barbados is actually right across, so we're gonna walk um, and show you how you have to cross over now since they have this blocked off. Liam, yeah, I saw they're making a smokehouse over at uh, Liberty, uh, at the American Adventure over in Epcot. That'll be pretty awesome. Uh, 
uh, let's see, Gates, Justin looking on Google Earth, the spot it could go from there towards Blizzard Beach, maybe then Animal Kingdom. Okay, so, all right, let's talk. A lot of people have said, you know, possible expansion, walkways is the other thing. Walkways is probably going to be the most feasible explanation. It just seems like a lot of space wrapped up just for walkways. And why would they just redo these specific walkways? I, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with them. I mean, they were pretty much in the same condition as these walkways here that we're already walking on. Jeffrey Hampshire, thank you uh, so much. $1.99 Super Chat. Be there in 56 days staying at All-Star Movies. Awesome. I love the All-Star Movies. Uh, so expansion. Another person said um, uh, bus, busing, bus stops. Uh, somebody else said um, bathrooms was another one. Somebody said possibly a boat dock to take people across on a boat or maybe another bridge. Uh, a lot of that seems pretty excessive as far as accessibility to get across. So if you were to build some sort of a dock here, some sort of a boat that would take people from Trinidad over that way, um, just seems a little excessive, especially when you have the, the footbridge right there. Now there's only a walkway on one side of the bridge, the far side of the bridge, but they could, you know, extend that and make another walkway on the on this side as well. Um, now, if they were to build maybe another footbridge that's going to go across the water, that could be a possibility that they're going to extend that out. But again, you have a very large area that's marked off here just to do something that would take place here, you know, more of a, a, a way across the water. Now, the boat thing I think would be pretty awesome if they were to actually put boat docks in all the islands and then have an internal boat system, which that's, I think that's really, really out there. I don't think they would go to that extent, but that would be awesome here at Caribbean Beach. Uh, as far as the bus stops, uh, they're actually already building the bus stop over there. So we've talked about this many times. You can see the roof of the bus stop right there. So that is a, they're going to use an internal shuttle. Uh, so, you know, they'll make the stops and then that'll also be a stop for the Skyliner. Now, how that's going to work as far as the internal, if, um, you know, resorts are going to, other resorts are going to come in here or theme parks or anything like that, I doubt it. It's probably just going to be used for the internal, uh, you know, people trying to get over from Martinique, you know, over here, Old Port Royal. That'll pretty much be what that bus stop is for. So they're not going to build, I would assume, not any sort of a bus stop here. Matthew Kind, thank you very, very much for that very, very kind uh, 9.99 Super Chat. Always good to have you here. I appreciate that. So, the, okay, the other big one is expansion. So if they were to move anything over here, now, obviously, the, the Caribbean Beach is the, the central hub. Everything is parked over here. This is pretty much the pathway everywhere. So, you know, out to the left here is Pop Century Art of Animation. To the right is Epcot Riviera Resort. Straight ahead would be Hollywood Studios. So this is the central hub. Now, whether or not they're going to extend out the backside, maybe for a phase two, that's a possibility. But... I'm going to probably doubt that as well, because if you look at the positioning here, somebody had mentioned uh, Animal Kingdom and Blizzard Beach. That's actually in the opposite direction. Uh, Animal Kingdom and Blizzard Beach would actually be pointing pretty much in this direction right here. So you would have to go down Victory and then down Osceola, or Osceola, however you want to say it, down towards Blizzard Beach and the Animal Kingdom. Now what is down here is Disney Springs. Now, could they make an extension towards Disney Springs? I would probably say be against that as well, because if you're coming out of the back of the Caribbean beach and you're coming through this direction, even if they're going to put towers or anything here, you're basically going straight through the Bonnet Creek area, resort area, which is not owned by Disney. So you'd have to drastically wrap around that. So you're basically going on the edge of Caribbean beach, down to um, Buena Vista Drive and then down to Disney Springs. So it seems kind of silly in a way that they'd want to do that, especially coming out. You know, they'd have to come out onto the water. This looks fairly well complete as far as, you know, how this is back here. You know, it, it is left open. Could they possibly extend it more? I think they left it open just because it's that open air market feel. So I don't see any more extensions coming off of, of this area here. Now, whether or not this could be 
just another station in itself. I would seriously doubt it. This, I mean, right next to Trinidad here would be crazy as well. Kay Wallace, thank you so much for the uh, $1.99 super chat. Staying at uh, Caribbean on Labor Day. Very, very awesome. Well, you're definitely going to see some huge changes here uh, come that time. So we're going to take a little bit of a walk. Let me, let me see what you guys are talking about here. Bridget, uh, can I do a shout out uh, for your mom for her birthday? Of course. Uh, she's from Ohio, like you. Very, very cool. Shout out to, uh, to mom. What is her name? Hope she has a very, very happy birthday, especially being from Ohio. All right, Jace, uh, we're going to put you on a, uh, on a little break here because I don't know what you're trying to spell out there, but you're annoying everybody. Uh, bathrooms, that was the other one. Um, yeah, it seems a little much for a bathroom here. Plus, I'm, I'm thinking that there might be a bathroom inside somewhere. I'm not 100% sure, but there could be a restroom facility already sort of geared up in there somewhere because they do seem to want to have restroom facilities before you get on, and they actually built a specific one over at uh, Pop Century and Art of Animation. Epcot already has a restroom facility right there. Uh, the Riviera, you would have access to the, to the resort very easily right there. Uh, so the only other one in, in Hollywood Studios has brand new restrooms as well. So the only other one in question for having a restroom uh, would indeed be right here, but I'm thinking that there's probably going to be a restroom facility inside, and they wouldn't have it this far away. Uh, the reason I'm walking down here is the pathway that normally you would take from Trinidad up to uh, up to the top of the hill there to get over to Barbados and then to uh, Old Port Royal. You basically have to go under this bridge now, which is not a not a big deal. So it just basically comes down here. Instead of going up and over, you just have to come down and under the bridge, and then this comes right up into uh, Barbados. Now, if they were to have some sort of a boat system, you know, they could do it. There's obviously, you know, access to get through here under the bridge. Then there's plenty of open space out there in the water. Whatever it is, those signs are definitely Disney Skyliner signs. This is something related to the Disney Skyliner. Uh, people are saying that there's no permits or anything that have been filed that anybody has seen as far as what's going on here. So maybe if they're just redoing walkways or reconstructing walkways here, um, maybe they don't have to do that much as far as permits and things like that. See, Vern 60, just trying to figure out exactly where I'm at, or are you just close to the Spyglass Grill? Yes, this is Trinidad, right in front of me. Uh, Skyliner Station is just to our right. Uh, the main entrance is also just in that direction. So this is all Trinidad, and then the Spyglass Grill is right around this, uh, right around this curve here. Robert, uh, it's still pretty warm here, but it's not anywhere near as, as what it was throughout the week. Sorry, I'm, I'm just reading some comments here. Uh, let's see, to a water park. Like I said, Disney Springs and uh, Typhoon Lagoon is down in this direction. So if this would indeed be any sort of an expansion, that's where they would be heading down towards. But I, I just kind of see that as it's a little excessive coming out of the Caribbean beach here. Rob, too soon for more towers. Rob, too small for a bus stop, too far from the water. 
or for a, did you say boater? Uh, we know the bus stop is over there, so this, this definitely isn't going to be bus related here. All right, uh, asking about uh, wheelchairs. I think you guys are kind of answering this. Absolutely, there is definitely wheelchair access onto the gondolas. Uh, basically, the seats fold up inside of the, of the gondola itself, and there is a secondary loading track. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the videos before, uh, if you're approaching into the station, there's a forward track that the gondolas will uh, circle around, and that's where uh, guests would come in and they would just be able to walk on board. If you need extra assistance or you're in a scooter, there's a secondary track that comes all the way to the rear and they can stop the gondolas back there and that's where you can load a scooter and then they would simply just join into the front track and leave the station without a problem. Looks like they're running some gondolas out onto the Epcot line, which is pretty cool. They have been testing, doing the evacuation testings. Uh, I caught a couple pictures of them actually doing that the other day. They have a very long crane with an arm that extends out over top of the, over the buildings. So we'll take a look at this area again. Here's Trinidad. I don't believe this is going to be any sort of, you know, structure that I have to do with the uh, Trinidad itself. They're not going to put another building here as far as rooms or anything like that. Uh, it's not going to be a tower or any DVC, anything like that. It's just, that's too small of an area. And I think people would just go absolutely nuts if they were to do something like that, especially this close. Uh, somebody did mention parking lot, uh, possibly an extension to the parking lot over here. Uh, is there a possibility that, you know, they're going to have some guests come in and maybe charge for parking and then you could use the, um, you know, as a specialized preferred parking thing where you could park here and then you can jump on the Skyliner if you were to pay for it. That could be a possibility as well. They tore those, uh, those sidewalks up just today. They did a quick job on that. Uh, boat rental or bike rental? Uh, possibly. Well, they uh, they still have that area set over by the lighthouse over by Old Port Royal for that. And again, the signs clearly indicate that this is something Skyliner related. So, you know, they have the they have the sign that's facing the station. Now they just put that new sign in front of this fence as well that says this is for uh, enhancements for the Disney Skyliner. So it has to be something to do with the Skyliner. And like I said, the, those Imagineers were, were here. They were Disney, uh, Disney Skyliner Imagineers. And they were the ones surveying the area here. I'm actually going to take a quick walk over here because they were doing the evacuation testing. I want to see if they're maybe doing some more of that because they're running the gondolas back out onto the haul rope here. Fern, what if they tore up the path uh, to encourage people to go under the bridge and they want to limit the street crossing? Um, that could be, that could be something maybe they're, maybe they are, maybe they're just removing the paths. You're right. Um, and they're going to have them come under and they will have some sort of crossing or actually that may not be a bad idea because we're going to walk over there and we're going to take a quick look. So if you're coming down from this area and they want to encourage you to come down this pathway, so they're going to shut a lot of the access or close off a lot of the access to go up and over the bridge because they want you to come down here 
because like I said, this side, you, there's really no path that you can walk to get down here. So if they're trying to encourage you to come down here, so you'd have to walk down through here and then walk up on the opposite side. So you're right, there would be so much foot traffic going through that they might want to encourage the people to come down here so they're not crossing that street constantly. But then again, they're going to have to cross the street further up by Jamaica in order to get over to the Skyliner. And there's another sign up there too. There's the same thing for the Disney Skyliner. They got this all closed off. Oh, oh, sorry me. about that. Nope. Hello. Hey. You're the passport guy. I'm the passport guy. Awesome. awesome. Hey, you hey, how are you? I'm live right now. You're Do awesome. you guys mind being on or? Awesome. Sure, yeah. okay. All right. Delaware. Delaware. Awesome. Awesome. Shout out to Delaware. It. Cool. I'm actually trying to figure out why this is all fenced off. So uh, they the fenced it off on. It was. We got here Saturday. Last Saturday. And they fenced it off on Monday. On Monday, okay. Yeah. I was here yesterday and I saw that it was fenced off, so I did a, I did a video. They're redoing the sidewalk. It looks like it's, the they're going to redo the sidewalk. And the bus station over on the other side. If you look over, well, it's kind of ripped up. So the only way to... The Skyliner itself looks like it's done. Right. Like the, en the, the uh, entranceways. The entranceways. Right. And the walkways. It looks like there's going to be a bus stop right in front. Yeah, there is a bus stop over there. It, it's just the, where people have to walk and go. None of that is done. Right. Yeah. So it looks like. That's yeah, that's that's the million dollar about. question is how to to access over there from Trinidad, especially because you're right. You really can't walk yeah, cleanly I, over there to get over there. Personally, I think they're going to make like another connecting walkway similar to something like this. Yeah. And connect it over on the other side. Well, have you been over there yet? Because they tore up all the pathways yeah. over there. Yeah, now, we're so. actually staying. Oh, you're staying in Trinidad. Okay. Staying over so there. you're making the walk under we the yeah. bridge. <laughs> we, we, we have to go that's, under yeah. that's how we knew they're making another walk. Yeah, okay. When we first got here, we were able to go across. And I was like, wow, yeah. Fence, but they really haven't done any work yet. They fenced right. it off. Right. Well, like they I said, they, they tore anything. up the they tore up the paths, but it seems like such a large area just for for walkways, for pathways. Well, like if you're coming from Trinidad, you can't. Like over there, it's all dirt over there in the corner. Right, right. There's there's no walkway unless you go. Yeah, we were just kind of talking about that. So they want you to go under the bridge. Right. They're trying to redirect you under the bridge. Right. There's no, there's no walkway on that side. Right. To there unless you come across the bridge. Right. Over and over that way. So they want to deter people from crossing the street. Yeah. But ironically enough, you have to cross the street anyways down further. Actually, they did. <laughs> they, they did rip up the sidewalks. Yeah, all the sidewalks are ripped up over there, so. So I guess they're redirecting, trying to redirect traffic to get to the. Yeah. Million dollar question. Yeah. I wish they just put a big neon sign that says this is what we're doing, but that wouldn't be any fun, right? <laughs> That'd be too easy. <laughs> we were down here. I was. Yeah. I was really hoping. No, they're not that far yet. Maybe, maybe into July. Oh, maybe early, early August. August. Yeah. That would be this, my guess. This week would have been a great time to test the high heat and put people on it to see. Well, I don't know if they want to put people on it. They. Yeah, they've been shutting the windows, opening the windows, and it's been pretty treacherous the last week. Oh, yeah. I did a couple live streams, and my camera actually shut down during the live streams. It was so hot that it just, it just fried. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, great well, to meet you guys. Great. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right, so they, uh, sorry about that, guys. They believe the, um, the redirecting the walkway theory as well. Bill, uh, Bill Ayers, A Ayers, I'm sorry, uh, dollar nine, <laughs> I can't even talk, dollar ninety nine super chat. I'll be in Walt Disney World tomorrow. Hope to say hi this week. Absolutely, I will be uh, definitely be around. Bye, guys.
Okay, so yeah, like we said, there's no there's no pedestrian walkway on that side of the bridge. Um, you know, could they extend that? It's it's possible. I don't know if they would have to go to that much much extent to extend that walkway. And it would make more sense to keep people on that side of the road and you know just to have them walk simply down here in fact this is staked off as well it has the exact same now they're, they're going to add a walkway here because you can see they have the stakes marked out all the way down into the fenced in area so i bet you they're going to put some sort of a pathway through here or they're going to extend this. So this could all just be part of that project, how they're going to, you know, just re-enhance this area, redesign it for pedestrian traffic. Craig Wheels, the passport guy, that's me. <laughs> Danielle, uh, when we book our holiday back on April 18th for October, uh, to November 19th, it said we will be experiencing construction work, and I thought surely that was because the Skyliner will be completely, or I thought the Skyliner would be completely done by then, uh, for October to November. I think they're probably just generally telling you that just in case, um, you know, because that is the official announcement is still the fall, so they're probably just saying that, and if they get it open early, you know, you get here and there's no construction, better for you. But I think they would probably have to say that for now, at least. Bill, thank you again. Uh, going with my mom, I sent you an email. Great job. Absolutely. Send me an email. We'll see what we can do. Like I said, I do, uh, I know we're here to talk about the fence. But uh, we can have a little excitement in life here. We're going to walk down through Jamaica a little bit. I want to see if they're doing any of that, that evac testing. Because they ran the gondolas out on the line and then they stopped them. I think they're basically just testing different scenarios to see how this, uh, this crane can get up and over the buildings. Because there's a lot of tight areas inside the buildings here inside the islands so it might be a little difficult to, to maneuver to get to some of the gondolas brad any hidden <clears throat> any hidden items in the uh, pads tonight yeah was that yeah that was you that pointed that out um in the lily pads if you're standing on the bridge over to Old Port Royale, the lily pads actually look like the design of Zero, the dog from, uh, from A Nightmare Before Christmas. It was a picture that I had, a picture or video or something. And that was pretty awesome because it looks exactly like Zero. Hopefully you guys saw the video that I posted of the um, the Riviera, the construction update over there. That is really coming along very nicely. Got a lot of great shots from both sides. Went over on the Martinique side as well. You can really see some great stuff, especially with the pool area and the, the water slide and everything over there. Chris Creekmore, Danielle, a um, lot of construction all over property. Yeah, that could be that way too. I mean, they're probably telling everybody that just to expect construction just because there's so much going on on Disney property. BP Buckets, uh, they'll throw up a bunch of flashlights and speed bumps to make it safe for crossing. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be... There's going to be some serious crossing issues over there. Uh, a lot of people all from this side trying to cross that, that road to get over there. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that with traffic. Because that's basically the front entrance. There's very heavy traffic that comes through there, and you're going to have very heavy foot traffic. So maybe all that construction is going to be 
related to that. They're, they have to have some sort of a redesign. I mean, it would be great if they can get, you know, some sort of a cross over the water, if indeed they will build some sort of a footbridge over the water that you can stay underneath the bridge and you can gain access over there. But, you know, with everything marked off on top of the bridge as well, it looks like they're going to extend that walkway. Obviously, Disney, uh, Disney has the engineers. They know, they know it's best. I'm sure they look at all the foot traffic designs and everything to figure out what's going to work best through here. I don't see the crane up right now. There's a lot of trees over here, though. It might be a little late for them to, to really be doing it. But hey, you get a free little tour of the Caribbean beach on a Friday night, so can't beat that, right? Danielle, thanks. I really appreciate all your info. Definitely uh, arrange a trip uh, when you're there. Absolutely, that would be awesome to meet you. Sheila, when will the gondolas be up and running? Uh, most likely during the fall is what Disney is still saying. But, you know, we talk about it all the time. It's, it's very possible that they could have something before that. Prior to Galaxy's Edge, maybe the Hollywood Studios line at least prior to Galaxy's Edge. So this is Jamaica. This is the Jamaica pool, and you can see the Skyliners running overhead back there. They don't really travel too much overhead until they get into Aruba. Then it's pretty much directly overhead. Edward, uh, it's actually cooling down pretty well tonight. It feels really good right now. Zippity Doodad, thank you so much for being here. Uh, follow Passport to the Parks. Uh, all the links there, absolutely. Thank you so much. Also follow uh, Zippity Doodad over on, on YouTube. He's putting up a lot of great videos, a lot of cool series as well. So let's definitely try to support each other while we're here. Chris, yeah, it rained uh, just for a little bit, just enough to, to bring that humidity level down a little bit. So it feels pretty decent here tonight. James, got to go. Uh, it's midnight here in the UK. Thank you for being here, my friend. I appreciate that. Serrano uh, PE, my favorite resort area, Jamaica. All right. Hey, Max Lab. Daniela, uh, also past midnight in Scotland off the bed. Thank you for being here. Truly appreciate that. Uh, is it uh, Pleon, Pleon K? Uh, very nice that I don't film people at random. I do. If it, I, I see you notice that, that I actually try to pan a little bit to the side. Usually when I do that, is when people are walking by because I try to try to give them a little bit of respect. Not everybody, you know, wants to, to have their face plastered all over the internet, and I can respect that. Sometimes there's nothing I can really do, but we're here to look at the resort and not people trying to enjoy their vacations. see any heads in there. They're not doing a late night cast member testing. Two real geeks. Hey, what's up? 
Chris had poured in the animal kingdom while you were working. That's always a bummer. Getting stuck in the park, especially as a cast member. Mark, got you another shirt to promote Passport to the Parks. Thank you very, very much. That is awesome, man. Thank you so much. Doesn't look like they're doing anything with the, the evacuations. Which that's okay. We did get to see it at least to see what it'll look like. If you guys want to check out uh, any of those pictures, I got them up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. You can check that out. Plus it was in my live stream before, actually before my camera died in the sun. We actually got to see that, so. Jim, so cool to watch you walk, uh, the walk I made this week. Departed yesterday morning, stayed in building 41 of Jamaica. I'm um, sending Rob a photo I took that is similar to the reflections at Parp, Parp, <laughs> Pop and Art. Uh, that is awesome. You, any kind of reflection pictures, definitely send them to me. You guys know I'm a huge, uh, huge sucker for reflections. I think Disney has some of the most beautiful photo-esque spots, especially by the water their hotels, all their transportation, the Skyliner especially now. All right, let's head over the bridge here real quick. Doesn't seem like much going on down towards Aruba. We'll get a little better view up on the bridge. Let's look at the lily pads while we're here. Or you can just kind of make that out. If you look at it, it looks exactly like um, like zero. You can see there's uh, like the top of his nose up there. Got to be creative a little bit, but if you look at him, he's there. I doubt if that was intentional in any way, but. It's like when you look at a cloud and you kind of determine what that cloud could possibly be. Ken, the Skyliner does look amazing over Aruba. I think it really enhances it here. And you know, a lot of people think uh, it may have taken away from some of the serenity of the resort, but I kind of like the movement. It gives a little bit, you know, when you go to the islands, you want to have that laid back feel, but there's always kind of that, that nightlife, that sort of action, that movement, that feeling that you get when you're there as well. So it's a good, uh, it's a good combination. You know, you can stay over uh, towards Old Port Royale and you can really relax and enjoy yourself, but then you have a lot of uh, a lot of movement and a lot of fun with the Skyliner. There's a lot of people coming back from the parks, just here, kind of chilling out, enjoying themselves. A lot of people down on the beach. Pool starting to fill up. It's absolutely a gorgeous night. Bill, did I miss your super? I thought I got your super chat. I promise you, my friend. Uh, Bill, dollar ninety nine super chat. I'll be in uh, Walt Disney World tomorrow. Hope to say hi this week. Oh, you got, oh, you keep dropping. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I <laughs> they did not pop up here for uh, for me. I switched uh, from Resort TV uh, to you because I am awesome. That is very very nice of you. Thank you so much. I love Resort TV One. They are awesome. Um, I hope you do still watch them. I watch them all the time myself. So. 
but thank you so much for coming over here. I, I truly appreciate that. Hopefully we can uh, we can uh, offer you know what you want to see. Like I said, I, I spent a lot of time outside of the outside of the parks. All right, I got that one too. Bill, you're gonna send me an email, come with your mom. I think I got the other ones here. But thank you so much. Sometimes they hide on me and I have to uh, sort of pan around a little bit to see them. I do appreciate them very, very much though. Two real geeks, uh, what's the tallest part of the Skyliner? Uh, we were actually just looking at it. As it comes over the, the Caribbean beach here, that is gonna be definitely one of the tallest points. And as it goes over uh, Buena Vista Drive, it's gonna be about the same height. And that will be at uh, around the 60 foot level. You're traveling anywhere from about 30 feet to 60 feet, depending on, depending on where you're at. Which it does make me nervous a little bit. Um, I'm not a heights person, so I'm not quite sure about how I'm gonna react in there. I definitely wanna ride it. I'm excited about riding it. Um, wouldn't be something that I might normally do, but you know, I've been following it for so long and I'm so excited about it. I'm definitely you know, gonna get in there and do it. So looking forward to it, but it is pretty high up there. <laughs> It's a pretty, uh, pretty small space high up in the air, but I'm ready for it. I'm super excited. See the ducks down there, kind of hanging out. Bill again, dollar ninety nine super chat. Uh, you are my fave, Gondola Godfather. Thank you so very much. That name is really starting to stick. The hashtag Gondola Godfather is uh, is out there. You can search it, all my stuff comes up. That's pretty awesome. I suppose uh, Tim Tracker could be king of the bus and I can be the Gondola Godfather, so. This is such a long line to get from the Caribbean beach here all the way into Epcot. So you can see they're still running these gondolas out onto the line. They're still out just on the one side. They have not started to return yet. And we've been, uh, we've been going for quite a while watching them here. So eventually you should see them as they have made the turn through Epcot. Uh, they'll start coming back in the opposite direction as well. Let's see. Uh, Pleon K uh, would love for me to do a live uh, Hollywood Horror Nights or. Sorry, um, yeah, the, the HSN, the, uh, the Horror Nights. Um, yeah, that would be a lot of fun to do. I'd love to take like uh, my daughter to do that, my daughter and my wife, and just kind of make a night of that. That would be a lot of fun. Definitely might look into doing that this year. James, will the gondolas stop in inclement weather? Depending on what that weather is, in a normal rain circumstance, they should have no problem operating. Uh, it's when you get the heavier winds and not that they can't withstand those winds. It's just, I don't think Disney is gonna want the guests up there, you know, kind of swaying back and forth and having an unpleasant time in the wind. So if it's just normal rain conditions and there's no lightning, there's no heavy wind, they're probably gonna run without any problem. Uh, it's when, you know, you get those large wind gusts and definitely lightning. Lightning is uh, an automatic shutdown. They're not going to run them with lightning.
Burn 60, yes, they do uh, look high up there, especially after seeing them reflecting over the lake the other day, uh, much lower. Yeah, that, that line coming out of, uh, out of Pop Century, that's, that's one I'd really like to start on. It's going to be the Hollywood Studios line. It'll probably be the first line that they run. But um, coming out over Pop Century over the lake, I think, will be nice because it's just a very gradual increase. It's very low over the water. So you kind of get a feel for it and get used to it and then it'll start to to climb a little bit as it heads into the wooded area to get over here to caribbean beach hollywood studios on the other hand it's basically you know right out of the station and right up onto the uh onto the towers so like i said it's gonna be awesome i'm ready for it i hope i can definitely be among the first to get on there to share it with you guys I'd be very excited to do that. Vern, uh, that's what gets me when people say these will completely replace the buses. No way with lightning shutting down uh, to strand, the buses will continue to run. Uh, absolutely, they're not gonna shut down the buses just for, outside of everything, outside of safety, outside of uh, them shutting down, any of that. You know, people people are afraid of heights. If you can't ride this, you have to have a secondary mode of transportation. The, that other mode of transportation is the buses coming out of here. So we actually see the gondolas coming back now. We'll stay here for a minute and we'll, we'll watch them coming back in the opposite direction. Look at how beautiful that view is. So they've traveled all the way around. They've gone all the way through the turnstile at the boardwalk. They've gone all the way into the station over at International Gateway. And now they're starting to return back through the Riviera station. They're gonna make that full turn inside the station and come out of the backside here. They travel very slowly inside that station. Uh, I do not believe that there's going to be a secondary loading track inside there. Uh, they run so slow and they, they basically stop inside the station as well. They travel so slow and they stop. So I think scooters are going to actually load in the same area as the um, you know, regular guests would just walk on and board. I could be wrong. There could be maybe something tucked in the back area in here somewhere, all the way in the back but I'm thinking it's just gonna be normal loading for everyone because they travel so slowly and they actually, I have seen them stopped in there with the, with the track actually moving or with the, uh, the haul rope, you know, the gondolas coming in and everything, so. So there you go, we see that yellow gondola. That would have been the first one out on the line now returning. Pete here, do they go through some car wash to clean them all out? That would be cool. Yeah, that's uh, curious on how they'll do that. If they, if they just, uh, if they power wash them when they're in the yard over there, uh, I don't believe they have some sort of a, a cleaning system that they go through before as they're parking in the yard. Maybe they have some sort of a sprayer that they go through. But I'm sure that they have, you know, people that are gonna go out there and they'll be responsible for, for washing and waxing them because they're gonna, they're gonna keep these things looking pristine. Uh, for quite a while. They'd have to go in and they'd have to clean the interiors every night, um, you know, go out and sweep them and, and probably power wash the inside of them as well. Isn't that a beautiful sight up there? Edge 70 curious, no weather, testing so late at night. Opening must be very soon. Yeah, this is the only line running. They actually had them all shut down and then they just started running the, the Epcot line out. Maybe they're running the other lines out right now, I'm not sure, but they test at all times during the day. Um, they could actually just be running them all out on the line and then they're gonna park them and they'll leave them there. 
a lot of times they'll leave them parked all night because they have to have so many hours of, of hang time, so many hours of loaded running time, um, just before they can even you know, sign off to, to open this or put any sort of bodies on it. There has to be so many hours of testing time and there's a, a huge process with that. Terry, is there a master control room for the entire system to start and stop the system? There are control panels, there's dispatchers at the, all the stations. Now there may be a central override system at the Caribbean beach, uh, but each one of the stations has a dispatcher that is, is capable of stopping and starting the rides. Uh, everything is very computerized. They can see there's digital readouts of the gondolas, um, you know, which gondolas are on, where they're at on the line, those kind of things. As they're entering the station, they, they can track all this stuff. So you can actually, hey, wait a second. I never noticed that sword in the tree before. Check that out. If you actually look on the little promo video that Disney put out a while back to where they showed the gondolas loading and unloading inside the Caribbean station, they show a quick shot of that panel. And you can actually see all the gondolas, sort of a digital readout on that computerized panel. But do they have a master kill switch that shuts everything down? I'm, I'm sure they do. But I believe it's going to be primarily, you know, up to each dispatcher in the stations to, to recognize, you know, when things have to stop and when go, things go. There'll be a protocol in place. I'm sure there'll be, you know, an overall manager that says, you know, this weather is coming in. You know, we're going to shut it down. There's all kinds of weather sensory equipment, so they're going to be monitoring that all the time, and that'll determine when things will get shut down. But during the testing, you see these things stopping a lot, starting and stopping, starting and stopping. That's not going to be normal operations. You know, you're not going to be up there and they're not going to stop it for, for 10 minutes at a time just because they want to stop it. If this thing stops, there'd be some sort of an issue that it needed to stop. So it's going to be constantly moving like this for the most part. As guests are riding, you know, they're going to want to keep it moving, keep it moving. And again, the last thing that Disney's going to want is for people to be up there to be stuck and for any sort of heat issues to come into play. They're going to try to combat that um, as best as they can. You know, they're going to want to keep that thing moving and make sure that people are happy. Eventually classy, have they announced what those new enhancements are going to be? No, we were actually just talking about that at the beginning of the video. Uh, you can see directly across the lake here, just to the left of the bridge, that is all fenced off. And those enhancements are completely unknown right now. Um, most likely it's just gonna be some new walkways uh, to redirect pedestrian foot traffic. Um, so not 100% sure. We don't believe it's going to be any sort of an expansion over there, any more towers, a station, or bathrooms, bus stations. We kind of ruled a lot of that out. Um, what it's most likely going to be is just the uh, um, a, a redirecting of foot traffic, uh, possibly a foot bridge that might go across the water. I don't know. But it looks like they're going to extend the top of that, that walkway on the bridge to get over there as well. That'll be interesting though. If you want to go back and watch the beginning of the video, we talked a lot about it. We walked all around the fenced area. Joyce, this is so pretty. Thank you uh, for streaming this. Absolutely. That's what I am here for. I love doing this for you guys. Charles, Disney has several radar systems in various locations for these issues. Yes, the, the weather is definitely not going to be a problem. Um, there's sensory equipment inside the stations. There's actually um, sensory equipment that's actually on the towers themselves. They can, they can measure electricity in the air. They can measure wind speed. Uh, they can do all that stuff. And I mean, just simply look on your phone. I mean, you can see um, Google and everything gives you weather alerts. So th there's very sophisticated weather equipment out there that they know when weather is coming, lightning, winds, those kind of things. And before that really becomes an issue, they will get people off the system. You know, they'll run it really quickly and they'll unload people in the stations and, uh, and get them you know, on level ground as quickly as possible. So they did just stop the gondolas now. So like I said, this could be part of it where they just run them out for the night and they're gonna leave them sit overnight. 
Most of the time they bring them in over the weekends and they're not testing over the weekends, which I think Doppelmeyer, you know, really family oriented company. So I think they, you know, they allow the workers to have their time off and things like that. But really a gorgeous night here tonight. Jim, uh, Disney still officially says the fall, but we're all hoping for before Galaxy's Edge sometime in August. Two hundred uh, Dan LB, some pretty light construction equipment. Uh, leads me to believe it's nothing major. Yeah, it could just be that for now. Like I said, they, maybe they're just tearing up the paths and they're gonna redo the paths, widen them, just redirect them somehow so they're leading more towards how they want the guests to actually walk in the directions they want them to walk in. Um, it's interesting. Charles, I know the fact that Blizzard Beach has a full Doppler radar system. Yeah, the same thing with the, the water parks. I mean, they shut those water parks down with the same conditions. Heavy winds, um, lightning, those kind of things. You know, very similar to what the Skyliner would do. So we live in a very technologically driven age, so I, don't have any issues with, with them finding out about weather. It's a very large, uh, very large container being wheeled over the bridge behind me here. So sorry if that got a little loud. Resort budgeting test uh, cast member cast the other day were there riders on board? No, they have not put any riders that I have seen yet. Uh, that was just cast members that were out learning how to operate the system, learning how the loading works and those kind of things. And those are most likely high level managers and the people who will train the, the other cast members. But uh, they, they were not putting bodies on that I saw. Hey, Vance from uh, Tucker Paving, thank you so much. Always good to have you here, my friend. Good to see you around as well. Uh, won't be long, Rob, it will be open and then I will be on it. I hope so. I hope you get to ride it too. You've put a lot of work into everything around here, so. You deserve to uh, reap the benefits as well. Randy the Machine, uh, the area might be too small for buses, but trams would fit and keep people off the roads. Oh, that was another thing. Somebody said a, a possible tram that would run through here. Um, you know, possibly, but I think it's just excess because they have the internal bus and they have the bus station over that they built in front of the Skyliner already. So I don't, I don't think it'd be a tram. A tram would just be overkill in here. And you know, for the majority, I think people are gonna walk. They're not gonna, you know, if you're sitting here and you're waiting, say you're, if anything, they're gonna wait in Martinique, you know, cause Martinique is the furthest over here. Would I jump on a bus to maybe run over there? Probably, I mean, I, I like to walk around the resort, so I'm cool with it. But for the most part, Trinidad is gonna walk over there. Jamaica's gonna walk over there. Barbados is gonna walk over there. Aruba's gonna walk over to the Riviera. So Martinique is really the only one in question as far as trying to get over there and anybody from Old Port Royal. So an internal system for the buses is really not gonna be used that much, I don't think. Cause you know, you're gonna sit there, you're gonna wait 15 minutes for a bus just to get on it and then go over there and then get on the Skyliner. If you're waiting that 15 minutes for the bus anyways, just get on the bus and go to whatever park you're, you're trying to go to. The Skyliner just becomes kind of a novelty at that point. Jim, a lot has changed since uh, being there in December. We'll be back in September. Can't wait to ride it. I can't wait for you to ride it either. I think we're all on board with that. Pete here, a 230 passenger open roof, two level tram. Wow, that is, uh, if they do something like that, I would be shocked. It'd be cool, hey, you know, I'd ride it. If Disney wants to go that far, I'd definitely ride it. It'd just be a lot of fun. And again, it would be an open air tram, no air conditioning. So no complaining about the Skyliners without the air conditioning. Don't see that they're extending 
that arm for any sort of an evacuation test at all. I Justice Plays. Rob, do you think, uh, what do I think about Sebastian's Bistro? I think it's very quaint inside. Uh, it's very small. And I thought the food was absolutely excellent. We ate there and my food was fantastic. Uh, we had the, uh, the bread service that you get. It's the bread with the different um, kind of dips and stuff, the, um, the hummuses and things that you get. The bread was fantastic. Uh, the meal itself was just really, really good. So, in fact, let's walk back there now. Why not? We'll go check it out. We'll see the banana cabana. It's probably pretty happening right now. Pete's here. They do exist already. Uh, we're talking about the um, those trams. I'm sure they do. Uh, let's see here. George, when do they open the Skyliners? We've talked about that a lot officially in the fall, but we're hoping right before Galaxy's Edge. Resort budgeting, I step uh, to step out earlier. They are working on both sides of the road. They are, they're, they're going to work on that up opposite side of the bridge as well, it looks like, to extend the walkway on the opposite side of the bridge. Sorry, I'm just trying to read some comments here. Chris, uh, big ups to Tucker Paving. Absolutely. Tucker Paving does uh, a lot of the work around here. Uh, they've done a lot of the, the concrete work and all kinds of stuff around. Hey, how are you guys? We're on the Skyliner. Um, a lot of stuff. Vance has done a lot of stuff around Disney. Um, so definitely many thumbs up for him and give him some big thanks because a lot of stuff that you see around Disney uh, he really contributed a lot into into building. So I really love meeting, you know, a lot of the the guys and the gals who have built a lot of the stuff through Disney, who put a lot of sweat into into making these things happen. This is why, you know, I love Doppelmeyer so much to seeing those guys because what they've created here is just something so incredible. You know, the designers, the construction crews, everybody who works on these resorts. You know, the Grand Destino is amazing. Uh, so it's just really cool. And, my, you know, my hat's off to a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the folks who really, really invest a lot of their time and energy into, into making all these dreams become a reality for us Disney nerds out here. Uh, Plan K, can you make the return trip without getting out, like, from Epcot and back? That was some, somebody asked me that question before. And honestly, I don't think, at least to start, I don't think you're gonna be able to do that just because they don't want people just on there, you know, riding and riding and riding. They wanna get people from point A to point B and get them off so somebody else can use that gondola to come back. You know, it's not like staying on the monorail where you can just ride around. Um, they may do that at a later point, but you know, when this thing initially starts, I think they're gonna to wanna to get people off just so they can keep those crowd levels moving so they can prove that this is a, a very, very adequate mode of transportation and a very, very efficient mode of transportation to get through. So my, uh, my official position would be not to start, but maybe sometime in the future. Banana Cabana, this is amazing. I love this place so much. Looks incredibly hopping tonight. It's a beautiful bar. And of course, you will get stunning, stunning views of the Epcot fireworks right from this deck here. You can sit, have a great drink, have some dinner, watch the Skyliners, and the fireworks happen right here. Gorgeous views of it. So here's, uh, here's Sebastian's right now. I'll show you a quick look at the menu while we're here. This be a little pricey, but it was totally worth it. It was so delicious. I had the uh, the Caribbean vegetable curry, and where's it at? Right here. And this was so so good. It so delicious.
looks like there's a little bit of a wait in here so we just walked in when we were here before we just did a walk-in hello Okay, so we are sitting at reservation time, so I'm going to take your number, and then yeah, I want to interfere with these people in here. If it was a little less busy, I would do a walkthrough for you, but... But it's a very, uh, very small place inside. Very well decorated, though. It's just... Uh, nice contemporary sort of that island feel again inside nothing uh, nothing too extravagant I did the uh, we did a live video of our meal so if you go back and search for that you can see our meal and you can see inside and everything it was a lot of fun now maybe Maybe they might do some sort of a shuttle, a boat shuttle from Martinique over to that area, over by Trinidad. That might be pushing it, but you know, if they were to have some sort of a launch here that would take people from this side, the old Port Royal section over to the Skyliner. But you know, when you think about it as well, this is most likely going to open and you should be able to walk all the way around. I doubt if they're gonna close this section off from the Caribbean beach to get around the Riviera. So even Martinique is going to have pretty quick access to walk over to get on the Skyliner station over at um, the Riviera there. So Aruba and Martinique are taken care of. So pretty much all the islands are not within a bad walking distance to the Skyliner stations. Charles, do you think you need to be a guest at one of the resorts to, to use the Skyliner? It doesn't seem to appear that way now. Uh, all of Disney transportation is open to, you know, people going to Disney. So nothing is limited to resort guests as of now. Will they change that rule once it gets operating and they see, you know, possibly, you know, if there's a lot of backups and there's just way too many people, maybe they will start limiting it. But as of right now, it's a, it should be open to you know, the general population coming in, you know, because they, they do want to encourage you, especially if you're coming from a theme park, you know, if you go in and you and you pay to park at Hollywood Studios and you want to come over and you want to have dinner here at Sebastian's, you know, they're not going to de detour you from doing that to jump on the Skyliner to come over here. Will it become an issue? You know, you don't want to come into the Caribbean Beach and park your car all day and then go over to Hollywood Studios and use the free parking. You know, that's that's really going to get old and they're really going to start charging for parking and everybody's going to be unhappy about that. People start abusing that. So let's not, uh, Hey, how are you? Sorry. I'm live right now. Do you guys mind her? No <laughs> how are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. You too. We're in Pennsylvania, but we watch it. Hello. Uh, that looks, what is that? It's a uh, Bo, Bo Peep cupcake. Oh, is that really? Yep. That is awesome. Check that out. I won't put a cam in your face and watch you no, watch no, you eat it. Yeah, you don't want to see I do that. My ugly face is always on camera eating, so <laughs> thank you guys. I appreciate it. You too, thanks. Thanks. All right, so we've been here before. I'm just kind of walking a nice little Friday night here. We had our discussion trying to figure out what that fence area is. I'm gonna go with just walkways right now, just a redesign of the walkways. Uh, just trying to, to reconfigure that to, to make it a little easier for pedestrians to get from Trinidad over to the other side. I just don't see it being any sort of an extension, uh, anything beyond that. But you never know, Disney, Disney is always full of surprises. It smells so good in here. They put some sort of a fragrance in here and it just smells so fresh and so beautiful in here.
Brian, do I think that the recent updates at Caribbean Beach were done well? I think so. Um, you know, it's all a matter of opinion. Did I like the old Caribbean Beach? Yeah, I did. But I, I actually do kind of like this better. This feels a lot more open. I think Disney's really going for that open floor plan in all of their resorts and their restaurants and things like that. They did it over at um, um, the World of Disney as well. They opened up that whole floor plan. You know, this kind of used to be, you know, sectioned off into different areas. But now when you walk in, I mean, it's just huge. It's grand. It's wide open. It really feels like, you know, you're kind of walking in from the outside, maybe a market area, and then you're coming into, you know, really nice indoor area and then you're kind of walking outside again and there's some open areas where you would eat and there's little shops and everything through here so i think it has that feel still that same old feel of what it used to be but it's just you know more modernized it's cleaner so i'm, I'm really happy with it and plus you know the addi the addition of uh banana cabana out there i think they did a fantastic job with that so They did a really nice job with all the seating in here, and they're really keeping it, uh, keeping it just like it was on day one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, really starting to get. Uh, get busier through here so everybody's coming back from the parks hello definitely one of the best pools I think in all of Disney I love the theming in here has that uh, buccaneer feel that old pirate feel they got the cannons, they got two slides in there. It's a nice large pool. Trying to make our way through the, the crowd here. Everybody's trying to get their drink. So indeed, it looks like that's what they've done is they just ran the gondolas out and they're gonna pretty much just park them for the night. So they should hang out there. Uh, they could possibly hang out there all weekend. If they do something with them tomorrow, we'll see. But you'll see this on all the lines. They will just, they will hang and hang and hang. And that's just based on all the, the time that they have to put in, so many hours. PT here, do I think the Skyliner will have a digital queue ticket like Hagrid's motorbike? Uh, I haven't done Hagrid, so I'm not quite sure what that digital queue is, but I have not heard anything like that. Um, they shouldn't have to have anything like that because the whole basis behind this system is to keep it moving, to keep that line moving. It's a constantly, you're constantly loading. That line should be constantly moving unless there's something you know, that goes wrong and that line has to stop because the system is stopped. You know, it's like the people mover. You know, you should be getting on and getting on as quickly as you can and getting those people out of the station as quickly as possible. Normal operations during the day shouldn't really be an issue. Will there be backups, you know, at night after the fireworks? Of course, you're gonna have huge crowds of people. Um, so there will be backups but it's not gonna be terrible. I mean, I've stood in line. I stood in line for about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes the other night when I was at Disney Springs trying to come back on the, the Sasagula River cruise. I stood in that line waiting for the boats to come and there was a lot of people and it was hot. We were underneath, there was no airflow and it was just miserably hot under there. But you know, you, you stood there 
and you wait just because I love riding that boat. So you do what you gotta do. There's a really lot going on back there. Everybody's out having a good time. And it's so great that you can come back from the parks and there's so much to do here. You know, if you wanna go and you wanna have a good time, you wanna eat, you wanna drink, you wanna swim, you can do all that stuff or you can just come and you can totally chill out like these people are doing over here just in the hammocks. I would always recommend the Spyglass Grill. We just ate there the other day again. The food was so good. Mama, the pool doesn't close until 11. All right, pool closes at 11. And information. I just sent him a message because I knew he was driving. Yeah, Pete's here. That 10 hour, uh, 10 hour wait for Hagrid was absurd. There's no way I'd wait for a ride. Hey, they're moving again. I can never wait uh, 10 hours for, for anything. Unless for some reason they rebuilt Horizons over at Epcot, I would wait 10 hours to go ride Horizons again. But that would be about it. I mean, even riding Smuggler's Run, <laughs> that's a long wait. I want to get into Star Wars and I want to experience the land and everything. You know, any kind of extreme weights for Smuggler's Run, I may wait uh, wait a few. But now they're going to do those passholder previews, so definitely want to get in on that, so we can just get in before the the massive crowds, anyways. Michael, this is not the only pool. Each island has their own pool. Uh, Martinique, Barbados, Trinidad, uh, Jamaica, and Aruba, they all have their own pools. In fact, uh, you can see Jamaica's pool is directly across from us there. Aruba's pool is down there. The Skyliners actually go right over top of it. Trinidad's pool will be up here on the left. Or not Trinidad, uh, I keep thinking this is Trinidad North. They made this Barbados. Here we go. Look at those reflections. I'm telling you. You can't paint pictures like this half the time. Of course, I gotta grab some pictures here. You guys are definitely gonna see these. Awesome, I love it. See, Michael was thinking of uh, switching from pop, but they only had standard pirate rooms left. Uh, pirate rooms are down in Trinidad, which is actually my favorite area to stay here, so I might make that switch, but I love Pop Century too. I think Pop is awesome. I think the overall food, food uh, quick service food is better at Pop Century, personally. I mean, you do have Sebastian's here, but you're not going to be eating there all the time. I just think you have a, uh, a better selection of food over at Pop Century. 
and I like the food a lot better over there. If that has anything to do with your decision making. Hi, Justice Plays. Thank you so much. $4.99 Super Cat. Thanks for everything you do. Rob, God bless. Thank you very, very much. Truly appreciate that more than you know. Sorry, I know I'm not talking very much. I'm just sort of enjoying the, the view right now. It's a nice little cool breeze coming through. Sometimes I just like to enjoy it, not through the lens of a camera and get a little bit of time here. So here's the, uh, the Barbados pool. I don't know. I personally, I love that Skyliner through here. And the towers don't even bother me anymore. When you stand from this distance, unless you're right up close to the tower, really not a big deal. I, I think the tower is less of a, of a standout. Now that the gondolas are actually on, you see them moving in the colors. That's what you're really paying attention to. You're seeing the, the whimsical, you know, the motion, how fun they are. And the towers are just sort of an afterthought. Ken, food at Disney is why I wanted to go back until I heard about the Skyliner. There you go. I mean, whatever brings you back. Everybody has their own, uh, their own reason for coming. Edge 70 spent a week at Caribbean Beach and the menu felt limited. Yeah, you know, like I said, I think it's a better quick service style menu over at Pop and Art. Um, you know, if you, something that you're going to want to eat every day and enjoy every day, there's more choices, more variety, and I, the food is really, really good over there. Caribbean Beach does seem to be a little limited as far as their offerings, and it's sort of, uh, you know, sort of stylized again to that Caribbean flair, which is fine. But, you know, if you're not into that, you, there's really not a whole lot of other choice for you over there. Chris, absolutely beautiful scenery here. Sheila, when will I get back to the Coronado Strings for Coronado for a live stream? I actually stopped there on the way over. They are doing, uh, the cast members are actually up in the Toledo tonight doing a test run. So they're up there, they're enjoying a the meal. There's a bunch of cars that are going in there. It's all cast members, you know, Joe Schmo like me can't get in. But uh, it's really cool to know that that's possible. They, they have, that's running. I'm gonna do my last construction update over there probably sometime next week so i'll put uh, i'll put an announcement out so we can really get a lot of people on board and go through that resort one more time before the actual hour. and we'll just have a lot of fun sort of a a grand send-off to all that construction that happened over there for so long Okay, well, my battery is now down to about 5%, so I think we made our full walkthrough. We talked a lot about what this fenced-in area up here is gonna be. It's basically right across from me. Uh, and personally, I think it's just gonna be, like we talked about, sort of a redirection of the walkways, pedestrian traffic, something related to that. Um, I'm doubting that it's gonna be any sort of an expansion of the Skyliner itself or bathrooms, bus stations, all that stuff. But you never know. I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on it. We'll keep checking. Uh, they did a lot of progress today. They tore all that stuff up. So it was cool to see that today. And they're gonna be doing a lot more stuff here in the near future. And I will definitely keep you guys in tune with that. Uh, you can always go to PassportToTheParks.com. You see all kinds of great stuff, including these reflection pictures that I took tonight. I'll get those up sooner or later. And you can see that. 
Uh, other than that, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys so much for the super chats. Uh, there's a bunch of them on here, so um, kind of hard to go through them all, but thank you very much. It's very, very generous. Uh, it's much appreciated. You guys know I'm, I'm very, uh, very open about that. Um, sometimes I just don't know what to say that you guys want to support and donate like that. It's just awesome to me. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here. We'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.